Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown and the European Commission Vice President Franz Timmermans at a media briefing on the heels of crucial talks. They called the discussions frank and fruitful. Both outlined the importance of the talks ahead of COP26 in Scotland in November. As perhaps some of the smallest and most vulnerable countries in the world, um, we need uh, international partners. Um, we have a number of issues affecting us and we cannot resolve them alone. And having um, a partner like the European Union, you know, standing in solidarity with us, especially during this difficult period of COVID. We need to look beyond the pandemic. We need to look at the huge challenges the world is facing, which is the climate crisis, but also an industrial revolution that will leave no country untouched. And in that context, I believe, um, increasing the awareness of the partnership between the European Union and uh, um, the Caribbean in its uh, widest uh, possible definition is important. On climate change, the call was clarion from both. There is an urgent need to address this existential crisis. Prime Minister Brown says there must be decisive action. He urged Vice President Timmermans to play his part in helping to make Barbuda the first island to be powered entirely by green energy. We have a hybrid system there and I believe that um, the solar project operates with batteries maybe for about 14 hours. So we need about 10 more hours of um, a battery, battery storage. So maybe um, we can challenge um, His Excellency to... Um, prioritize um, Barbuda for some funding. Um, it will be a good example of resilience in which um, Barbuda would, would have emerged from the aftermath of um, Hurricane um, Irma to become the first um, Green Island community in the world. Uh, so, so you have an exercise there. A challenge. Yes, thank you for that challenge, Prime Minister. Um, thanks a lot. The visiting EU official said there is a need to address the issue the Prime Minister has long been championing, that of compensation from the world's biggest polluters to the countries most affected by climate change. Meanwhile, I pressed the European Commission Vice President on the matter of access to financing for climate change mitigation and adaptation. Is the European Union willing to remove the per capita income criterion? Do you think that you would want to perhaps put a pleasure on the table in terms of when you're looking to push the issue um, in, the, in, in the realms of uh, Brussels? Uh, well, I understand that you're pushing me on this, but I, uh, uh, you're doing a great job as a journalist, but I can't give you a concrete answer on that uh, right now. Uh, our homework, yep, the ambassador. ambassador, ambassador. I'm trying... I'm I will try to come to the rescue a little bit. Um, in the middle of the, of, 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 at the onset of the pandemic, whatever funds we could reallocate uh, were uh, reallocated. As you know, and it was mentioned that we have a long bureaucratic system, so it's not possible to shift money that is already committed. 